Lumify? It's kind of amazing. Wow. Lumify eye drops dramatically reduce redness. In one minute. And look at the difference. My eyes look brighter and whiter for up to eight hours. Lumify really works. See for yourself. Lumify. Okay, everyone. Our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Yay! Insure with 27 vitamins and minerals, nutrients for immune health, and insure complete with 30 grams of protein. Tomorrow on ET, nearly four decades after We Are the World, we're with Lionel Richie revealing stories you never knew. I am telling you, it, it, I freak myself out. You guys, this documentary is incredible. You're going to love it. Now, before we go, more Grammy news. Oprah is set to present and celebrate music's biggest night, but something Oprah won't be celebrating? Turning 70 today. When you get to be where I am, mm -hmm. uh, a woman of a certain age, one of the great deep joy. Happening now. Three SAPD officers charged in the death of a woman last summer, making their first court appearance. Coming up, we'll take you inside the courtroom and tell you what's next in this case. And days after KSAT investigates, exposes a mother in violation of child custody orders. She's arrested. What charge that mother is now facing? Sunny and dry stretch of weather. Very pleasant as well for now. I'll be back in a bit to talk about when the rain returns. The News at 5 starts right now. Three San Antonio police officers charged in the shooting death of a 46-year-old woman last summer made their first court appearance today. As Eric Hernandez reports, it was a quick hearing, but it is the first time we are seeing former Sergeant Alfred Flores, former officer Nathaniel Villalobos, and former officer Eleazar Alejandro since they were indicted last month. Nathaniel Villalobos. Each man was called up by 187th District Court Judge Stephanie Boyd. The three officers are accused of shooting and killing Melissa Bettis last June. Police Chief Willie McManus said it's believed Bettis was having a mental health crisis and had a hammer in her hand. Police later released a portion of edited and blurred body-worn camera video from the scene. In it, you can see the moment officers fired shots through her apartment window and patio door. In December, Flores and Alejandro were indicted on a murder charge and Villalobos was charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon by a public servant. In court, the state telling the judge they are still in the process of getting more than a thousand items of evidence turned over, but were having trouble getting some records. The deceased complainant in this matter uh, had a uh, treatment period at Starlight Recovery in Kirby. Mm -hmm. I've made efforts to obtain those documents. They are now bumping me back as a federal HIPAA violation, I anticipate it's taking the state some time to work through that. Nicola Hood, Villalobos' attorney, spoke to KSAT after the hearing and explained that this case is still in its early stages. We talked to the state. They notified us that we were missing some documents, and so the judge gave them a date to get, make sure we had all the discovery for all counsel. And so we, we're going to continue reviewing evidence as we get it in. Moving forward, whenever a trial date does happen, it appears each case will be tried at the same time. The next hearing date has been set for February 26, and all discovery is expected to be turned over by then. Now, all three men are facing five to 99 years of life in prison if they are found guilty. Erica Hernandez, Case at 12 News. San Antonio police trying to piece together exactly what happened after finding a man acting erratically and soaked in blood, then discovering a woman dead inside an apartment. It turns out the victim was the man's wife. Officers initially called out to Vance Jackson to the Oak Creek Apartments, not far from Wurzbach Road, for a man that was screaming and covered in blood. Police say as they worked to calm him down, officers received another call that escalated into a situation and escalated the situation to a murder investigation. We're told police asked the man whose blood was on him and that he said it was his wife's blood. About the same time, we got a call for a, a, a body inside an apartment. So officers made entry and they did indeed find the body of a, a woman. They say she had been shot to death. The man taken into custody without incident, booked for murder. Still unknown why the man allegedly killed his wife. Officers say a gun was found. They tell us it will be tested to determine if it was in fact the murder weapon. 
New at five, a woman at the center of a contentious child custody case has now been arrested and charged. It's a story that KSAT investigates first told you about last week. She's accused of failing to return her daughter back to the child's father after Thanksgiving. Angel Nieves is now charged with felony interference with child custody. She was arrested yesterday. KSAT investigates learned from a police report that November 25th, Nieves did not show up at Guardian House to drop off her nine-year-old daughter to her father. Guardian House is a neutral exchange location on San Pedro Avenue. The father had initially driven to San Antonio from Georgia, where he lives, to bring his daughter for a court-ordered visitation with his ex-wife. Police were called when Nieves was a no-show. Last week, Nieves was indicted in the case, and during a police welfare check on the child, Nieves was arrested. The child was returned to her paternal grandparents and is now said to be en route to join her father back in Georgia. Middle East now where headlines are President Joe Biden meeting with his national security team after a drone attack in Jordan kills three U.S. service members and more than 30 others yesterday. The administration blaming Iranian-backed terrorists and saying it appeared to originate in Syria. The attackers reportedly targeted a desolate desert installation known as Tower 22 that houses more than 350 service members. Their assignment is to work to prevent the resurgence of ISIS. Top U.S. officials say there will be retribution. The president and I will not tolerate attack on U.S. forces, and we will take all necessary actions to defend the U.S. and our troops. Iran denying any involvement in the attack. Two U.S. officials tell CNN that the hostile drone followed an American drone that was returning to that base, leading to confusion and the delayed U.S. response. Officials say it's unclear at this time if the enemy drone followed on purpose or if it was just a coincidence. The escalation in the Middle East, just one of the issues at the forefront of the presidential race right now. The other is the possible border deal that could head to the Senate floor in the coming days. However, the question remains whether Republicans are going to listen to former President Donald Trump, who's tried to tank the compromise in part because he wants to campaign on the issue this November. Our Washington correspondent, Julia Benbrook, has the latest on the border security talks in Washington and how those talks are impacting the campaign trail. Julia, one of the lead Republican negotiators in this, Senator James Langford of Oklahoma, is facing some backlash from his state for helping try to reach a deal on border security. So what can you share about that? Well, it really illustrates how difficult it's going to be for Senate Republicans to come together around something that Trump is rallying against, and that is this border security deal. Over the weekend, the Oklahoma Republican Party approved a resolution condemning Senator James Lankford for his role as a lead Republican negotiator in these ongoing talks. The state's party said that they would withhold support from Lankford until he gave up these negotiations. Now, in an interview, on Face the Nation on CBS this weekend. Langford said that he thinks that there's some misinformation about what is in the final text of this bill and that he looks forward to Trump and others having the opportunity to read it in full. Julia, how would the outcome of border security legislation impact campaign season for the presidential candidates? I mean, obviously, this has been a hot button issue, especially for Republicans. I'm guessing it, that kind of follows through with why they don't maybe don't want a solution while Biden's president? So immigration, like you mentioned, is a key topic on the campaign trail, and it's an area where many voters believe that Trump is the stronger candidate. So if Congress was able to pass this bill, it may allow Biden to kind of flip the switch and say, here's how we improved security at the border while I'm president. Right now on the trail, talking about Biden's lack of action at the border is a key talking point for Trump. All right, Julia Benbrook reporting from us for, for us from Washington. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Don't forget the deadline to make your voice heard during the primary election is quickly approaching. You only have a few days left to register to vote now until February 5th, February 23rd, the last day to apply to vote by mail. The deadline for mail in ballots to be returned to the county is Election Day, March 5th. Early voting runs from February 20th to March 1st. A follow up now on a story we first told you about last night on the night beat. A number of attendees of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo Barbecue Cookoff 
had their vehicles towed after paying to park in what they believed was an authorized parking lot. Turns out it wasn't. Well, the owner of the parking lot contacted KSAT and says he will refund the towing and parking fees for all those who were affected. Happened over the weekend. Nick Owen, the owner of THT Off Road, says the parking for his business was supposed to have been blocked off so no one could park there. But he tells KSAT he learned that his employees were using the parking lot without permission to make extra money. Owen says he feels horrible. He apologizes. He says if you were towed, just call THT Off Road, ask for Mark, and send in a copy of the towing receipt. Meanwhile, Chris Derby with the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo says to avoid the frustration and headache of possibly being towed, just head to SARodeo.com. For all the parking, we actually have our, our lots all color coded, lot one through nine. We also have some shuttle lots that are available. Any one of those will work. If you go to SARodeo.com and look for parking, you can see we actually pre sell some of our parking as well, or you can buy the shuttle parking. Yeah, parking, one of the issues, counterfeit tickets have also been a problem in years past. Der Derby is stressing to make sure your tickets are the real deal. Go to SARodeo.com to see exactly where you can buy legitimate tickets to rodeo events. Here's a heads up if you're headed out to the rodeo, make sure you're headed in the right direction because city crews have now changed the signage of AT&T Parkway. It's now Frost Bank Center Drive, no longer AT&T. That's the view of the signs on I-35 South. The road signage now matches the name of the Spurs home arena. The Frost Bank Center and Freeman Coliseum are, of course, home to the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. How quickly does Google Maps and other related Ooh, technology that's a good update? That's question. Yeah, we'll that, find out. That could be problematic, so you've been warned. 39 this morning, 68 in the afternoon. Cool mornings, comfortable afternoons. And notice the high, thin cirrus clouds moving overhead. The cirrus are near us, and I love it when they are because that sets the stage for beautiful sunrises and sunsets happening momentarily. It's hard to see it on the visible satellite imagery, but that thin veil of cirrus is sliding overhead that should give us a vibrant and beautiful sunset have your smartphones ready snap those photos up to upload them to ksat connect through the weather authority app 69 leon springs 74 floresville 70 and bull 69 right now in laverne and as we go through the evening temperatures falling off quickly will be 53 at 10 o'clock by midnight at 50 degrees not much of a breeze but more cool mornings followed by comfortable afternoons then the rain returns. We'll talk about when that arrives in just a bit. All right, thanks, Adam. Let's take a look at a bit of a traffic tie up here. 410 in Fredericksburg. Looks like this is the eastbound lanes coming towards us. That's where you see a couple of vehicles off on the side of the road there, as well as a tow truck has one of the vehicles on the back and even on the access road on the frontage road. Traffic is slow going at best, so something to keep in mind. 410 in Fredericksburg. It's a busy time out there people making their way around this slowdown. Still ahead here on the news at five, laying a baby to sleep in a bassinet could put them at risk of suffocating two bassinet brands that are now being recalled along with other safety alerts that could affect your family. It's all coming up after the break. Here's a look at what we're working on for the news at six o'clock. A woman hit and killed by police officers during a chase. Now SAPD is investigating how that happened. Coming up at six, we take a look at the department's policy on pursuits and what it allows. A groundbreaking study based on research from the 1940s. The local researchers tell us a specific part of the brain could detect dementia 10 years earlier than it does now. And in our History Untold series, Jesse Degollado tells us about the first peoples of San Antonio at the Spanish missions. Their descendants are proud to say their roots here date back hundreds, if not thousands of years. It means that, uh, that I'm a part of this land. All that and more today on the News at Six. To an alert now for parents about a couple of popular bassinets. Consumer Reports calling on federal regulators to investigate how safe they are for infants to sleep in. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz with important information for parents. Consumer Reports is pushing for a recall of two bassinets, the Kids 2 Ingenuity Dream and Grow Bedside Bassinet and the Halo Bassinest Flex Portable. 
The concern is the cantilever design. They say the bassinet may tilt, causing the infant to roll over and possibly suffocate. According to government data, five infant deaths are associated with various cantilevered bassinets. I contacted both companies. Halo Dream responded, saying there have been no reports of injuries or fatalities with its product and that it is safe when used according to its warnings and instructions. If you have a new electric bike from Bass Pro Shop or Cabela's, might need to unplug it. Pacific Cycle is recalling certain Ascend Cabrio and Minaret models. There's a wiring problem. Three fires have been reported. These were sold last year. Take them back. 72,000 kids' bike helmets are recalled because they can fail to protect a child's head in a crash. These are Retrospec Scout models sold at bike stores and Amazon. Retrospec is offering refunds. And these toy tiaras can be toxic. More than 12,000 play rhinestone tiaras sold on Amazon are recalled because the red stones contain excessive lead, dangerous if a child ingests it. They were sold in four packs. Contact the company to get your money back. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Look outside with live cam. A little bit of, uh, not that we needed a do-over, but maybe a part two from yesterday to today. I mean, it was beautiful out there yesterday and today as well, Adam. Yeah, beautiful weather over the weekend, especially yesterday. And now we do have some ditto days, as we like to call <laughs> I like them. It. Some do-over days, we could put it that way. Then some changes happen and come our way later this week. Let's get right to our rain chances. We'll get right to it because we're looking sunny and dry for a few more days. Friday, I think we'll have some morning fog and a little bit of drippy dampness. Then Friday night through Saturday morning, we're expecting our next round of rain to hit and that'll move out of here by midday Saturday. So you look at the overall weather pattern, very quiet across the lower 48 right now. Hardly anything detected on radar. We have one little swirl over the northern Baja Peninsula that's going to throw a little bit of energy our way by the middle of the week. That's basically just going to give us a little extra cloud cover. Ornamental clouds back into the sky from that. But then we're watching a shift that happens by Friday, and that's a new system digging and dropping in. This will have its own closed circulation and really help stir things up in Texas and surrounding states as well. And that's going to be our rainmaker for Friday night and into Saturday morning. Now, keep in mind, it's still a little far away. The timing can change, so check back in for updates. And the latest trends with the model guidance is actually speeded up a little bit. We may see that trend continuing, so we'll keep you posted and let you know. But as it stands right now, we're looking at the rain moving in Friday night after sunset, even a few rumbles of thunder while we sleep and into early Saturday morning, then around noon Saturday on the back side of it, we should start to clear out a bit and have sunshine for the second half of the day. Remember when I said stir things up, not just Texas, but from the Gulf Coast all the way up into the Northern Plains and over to the Rocky Mountains, a pretty potent system that I do think could give us a quick inch of rain. We'll have another look at the rainfall accumulations and the latest model trend with those coming up at six o'clock. Let's talk temp 67 right now. Dew point of 37. That's that nice crisp air that we have outside and not much of a breeze. It's actually a calm wind right now. So beautiful evening here to get outside. Snap photos of that beautiful sunset that's taking shape. Sunset officially, I think 6.09 p.m. I want to say that's what it is now officially. Usually it's at its best a little bit after that. Temps right now across the state 60s and 70s. After our summer, we earned this. Yeah, we did. We definitely earned these beautiful, comfortable conditions. The 60s to near 70 locally. Now, tomorrow morning, we'll start the day a little on the cool side. 43 in San Antonio, 39 up near Comfort, 41 Hondo, 43 Nixon and Seguin. Then by tomorrow afternoon with nothing but sunshine, we'll make it to 65 at noon, then 70 degrees for the high temperature. So maybe a sweatshirt for the kids in the morning, but have short sleeves underneath because even by recess and especially stepping off the bus, sunny and 
comfortable out there with those temps near 70. So I did mention those changes coming on Friday. First thing in the morning, we'll have some fog, little bit of dampness out there. One of those, those mainly gray kind of damp days, even if you sprinkles possible, but still near 70 for the high Friday night into early Saturday. We're anticipating the areas of rain. Even if you rumbles of thunder, it's too early to really consider severe storms, but it is a possibility that is on the table. The slight chance of that. That's something we'll uh, definitely update you on in the days ahead. Then windy behind it, a windy but sunny weekend. Those winds pick it up to about 30 miles per hour Saturday and Sunday. By the way, coming up at six o'clock, we'll also have the latest on our uh, area reservoirs and lakes. Perfect. Thank you, Adam. All right, Spurs have a win streak going, Mary. Mm -hmm. Can they keep it going tonight? We'll see. It's a great opportunity to extend a two-game winning streak that they're on. They swept their back-to-back -back sweat set over the weekend, and now hopefully to stay in the win column against the Wizards tonight. We'll hear what Trey Jones has to say about the matchup coming up. Plus, the USL season is just over a month away. We'll take a look at the biggest news out of SAFC's camp this offseason. The San Antonio Spurs came back from a 15-point deficit against the top defense in the league, defeating the Timberwolves for their third win in five games on Saturday. Hey, maybe the success is because Spurs' great former great Boris Diaw is in town. Now tonight, the Spurs host the Wizards, who they beat on the road nine days ago. If you recall, Victor Wembanyama made some immaculate plays in that game, like this 360 no-look rejection on Trey Jones' brother, Tyus Jones, at this morning's shoot-around. Trey said Tyus might be looking for vengeance tonight. Jones also talked about how Wizards center Daniel Gafford being back in the lineup impacts the matchup this time around. Are you still amazed at the no-look block that he, uh, <laughs> he got on time? Yeah, for sure. I think my brother <laughs> might try to get him back tonight, however um, he can. But, yeah, that's still, that's still crazy. The 360 block he had on I don't know how he did it. <laughs> Big time roll guy um, in, their, in their pick and roll. Um, he, he crashes the offensive rebound um, and, the, and the boards really well. Um, he's a pretty good defender around the rim as well. So um, that's how he changed them um, for sure. Obviously, last time we played him, they had, I think Marvin Bagley was one of his first games, and you know he was pl he's playing really well as well. So um, yeah, we're just gonna ha have to be ready for um, Gafford around the rim and keep him off the boards. Gafford's presence in the post will certainly be noticed. The Spurs and Wizards tip off this evening at 7 o'clock from Frost Bank Center. San Antonio was favored by four points as it chases a third consecutive win. The start of the USL season is a month and a half away, and while San Antonio FC will not be starting as defending league champs, they will be starting off with a different look to their roster. A big move this offseason was San Antonio FC losing goalkeeper Jordan Far Far, the 2022 championship goalkeeper of the year, turned into a fan favorite very quickly. For some reason, Farr fell out of favor last season and has now signed with the Tampa Bay Rowdies. San Antonio will face the Rowdies in its second game of the season on March 16th in South Florida. That's their only match against each other this season. Farr will definitely be missed by SAFC fans. It's almost yeah, time. I didn't know that. I didn't know he was leaving. Yes. Yeah, instead of firewall, I used to call him the Farwall. <laughs> That's awesome. Gosh, you know. <laughs> Is it Mary? <laughs> it is. Thank you, Mary. We'll be right back. <laughs> Sunset, 6.09 p.m. A little bit after, ooh, look up at the sky and you'll see some vibrant colors bouncing off the base of those cirrus clouds composed of all ice at about 30,000 feet. Cool mornings in the lower, lower 40s next few days. Comfortable afternoons right near 70 and a lot of sunshine. Changes come Friday night. That's when some rain returns. We'll talk more about just how much we could get and where coming up at six. All right, thank you, Adam. And thank you for watching the news at five. World News is up next. We'll see you at six. <laughs>